Now we come to Serapis Bay, the Lord of the Fourth Ray. The Fourth Ray, as I mentioned before, the White Ray and the base of the Spine Chakra. Here Serapis receives a neophyte into the Mystery School. This is a painting from a book of his dictations I published, Dossier on the Ascension. This is a retreat that you go to to learn the disciplines of the white fire of the Divine Mother and to prepare for your ascension because you see you ascend by the white light. And the process of weaving the wedding garment or the deathless solar body is taught to you here and in the Keepers of the Flame lessons. This white light then becomes a brilliance in your aura and it is of course the blending of all of the rays the highest vibration, and it is the means whereby the soul ascends to God. So that path is uh, very well described by Serapis in this book. Ser Serapis was a high priest in the Temple of the Ascension on Atlantis. People would go to temples when it came their time to make their ascension. He carried that ascension flame to Luxor, Egypt, where it is enshrined today, once a physical temple, now the etheric octave. So he re-embodied in Egypt as the Pharaoh Amenhotep III between 1417 and 1379 BC. He was called the Magnificent and he was the father of Akhenaten, uh, who was the husband of Nefertiti. Brought Egypt to its height of diplomatic prestige, prosperity and peace. He built many monuments, palaces, and temples, including the Temple of Luxor. This shows a colonnade of King Amenhotep III. The temple corresponds to the outline of the human body. The uniqueness in which the masters have left for us their teachings is truly amazing. A man by the name of Schwaller de Lubitsch, who studied it for over 15 years, said that the entire temple becomes a book explaining the secret functions of the organs and the nerve centers. Such was the method that Serapis hid in stone a message he did not want to be lost. He reincarnated as Leonidas, the king of Sparta, 480 BC. Here he outpictured the fourth ray qualities of obedience and discipline. He and 300 of his countrymen died defending the pass of Thermopylae against the vast invading army of the Persian king Xerxes. The qualities of this ray make it the ray of architects, designers, those who love the excellence of God in form and bring it forth even if they're planting a garden or, or designing a house or, I mean, all of us use the white ray. And when we use it to bring something into manifestation, and we do so with all the dedication of excellence. Excellence is the quality of the fourth ray and of the Divine Mother who always works with us in everything we do. So here's the base of the spine chakra. The color is white and it has four petals. Serapis prepares us to receive the gift of the working of miracles. His retreat at Luxor, Egypt on the etheric octave. He uses the diamond, the pearl, the zircon, and the quartz crystal. Since we've taken up the diamond, we'll take up the pearl. It is a symbol that is used in the world's religion. The Gnostics who wrote the hymn of the soul, specifically Thomas, which is also called the hymn of the pearl, compared the soul and the pearl. The ancient text, the Book of the Glory of Kings, says that the Archangel Gabriel was directed to protect all who carry the pearl. Casey says it strengthens the body, should be worn close to the skin. Primary effect is upon the emotions. It helps develop an even temperament. I always feel the love of the Divine Mother when I am wearing pearls. Pearls are a focus of the resurrection flame. We have decreased to the resurrection flame. It's on the sixth ray. When you want to amplify the resurrection flame in your body, you give the mantra of Jesus, I am the resurrection and the life. And then you can follow it of my heart, uh, now made manifest. And uh, we have visualizations for those flames in the science of the spoken word book. So when you think of pearls, think of a string of pearls as a rosary or a prayer 
bead for counting our decrees, for counting our prayers. As we consecrate our prayers to the resurrection and the life of all children of God, we can count them on a string of pearls. Thus our pearls then become the repository of our devotion. So when we wear them, they have a very personal vibration. And if you have a loved one that is suffering, you may take your pearls and place that on the loved one or put them around his neck. Beloved Nada, representative of the sixth ray, has charged uh, the pearls that we have. Now the zircon is another gem used by Serapis. It's said to allay jealousy. Then, besides the zircon, which comes in all kinds of colors, we have the quartz crystal, one of the most abundant minerals in the crust of the earth, and one which is so often used by spiritual devotees in this age. So the quartz we have comes from South America, charged by Serapis Bay, since it bears the focus of the fourth ray. And here is a quote from Serapis. You need not expect, precious ones, that as the swoop of a great bird of paradise, heaven will come down to you and raise you instantly up into the light. Each day you weave a strand of light substance back to the heart of your presence by the shuttle of your attention. Each strand strengthens the anchor beyond the veil and thus draws you into a state of consciousness wherein God can use you more as an effective instrument for good. The preceding lecture was given by Elizabeth Clare Prophet, world-renowned author and spiritual teacher. The Summit Lighthouse is an international spiritual organization dedicated to universal enlightenment. Founded in 1958, the Summit Lighthouse has been a beacon of truth to thousands worldwide and a leader in New Thought spirituality. The preceding program has been brought to you by the Summit Lighthouse. For more information, call 1-800-245-5445 or visit our website at www.tsl.org. Outside the USA, call 406-848-9500 or write to the Summit Lighthouse, 63 Summit Way, Gardner, Montana, 59030, USA.